In this question, I think a lot of people would try to plug in a bunch of numbers and see if they can eliminate some answer choices based on what they find. Uh, but I don't think you'd actually learn anything from that, even if you do get the right answer. Uh, I do think, though, there are two reasoning-based approaches that would be really good for this question, and we'll learn a lot out of each of them. So the first approach would be to add 2 to both sides of the inequality, so that we have x squared is less than 2. And then you would take the square root of both sides, and of course apply an absolute value onto the unknown, because when we take an even root, we don't know which side of 0 the whole thing started. So we'd say that the absolute value of x is less than the square root of 2. Now if you translate that into simple English, that means that x is located less than square root of 2 units away from 0. So it's what I describe in my book as a house arrest situation where x is a criminal and he's under house arrest, he's wearing an ankle bracelet and he's not allowed to go more than square root 2 units away from home, the home of course is at 0. So which of the answer choices describes that situation where x is confined to within square root of 2 units away from 0? Looks like answer choice C fits the bill perfectly. Let's explore the other approach right after the intro. So for the second approach, I'm going to use the difference of squares. So we know that a squared minus b squared is a minus b times a plus b. In this case, we have x squared minus 2. So if I pretend that 2 is some number squared, well, that number would be square root of 2. So applying the special product from the difference of squares here, you'd have x minus square root 2 times x plus square root 2. That whole thing is less than 0. Now, under what circumstances would a product of two things be negative? That would happen if those two factors came from opposite sides of 0. So if I were to draw a number line and put the 0 in the center and ask myself, where would I place x minus square root 2? Where would I place x plus square root 2? Logically, x plus square root 2 should be further to the right than x minus square root 2 because adding a positive number would move you to the right on the number line and adding a negative number or subtracting a positive, if you prefer to think of it that way, would move you to the left on the number line. So the relative order of x plus root 2 and x minus root 2 should be clear if we just think about it. And we know that they have to be on opposite sides of 0. So x plus root 2 would be to the right of 0 and x minus root 2 would be to the left of 0. But if that's true, where does that leave x? I know that x is always going to be exactly square root 2 units to the left of x plus square root 2. And it's always going to be square root 2 units to the right of x minus square root 2. So if we know that x plus square root 2 has to be to the right of 0 and x minus square root 2 has to be to the left of 0, that would mean that x itself must be confined within square root 2 away from 0. So same conclusion that we came to before the intro. I think the value in this solution is not so much for test day. I wouldn't use this approach at the test center. But we can learn a lot from it and use it as an opportunity to practice our number line reasoning and our special products. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.